Oxbow Mega Transport Solutions is pleased to present our award entry for the 2018 SC and RA Hauling Job of the Year in the 160,000 to 500,000 net pounds category. Late in 2017, Amtrak completed testing on a new high-speed commuter train manufactured and delivered by Siemens. The new train was slated to travel between Seattle, Washington and Portland, Oregon. On December 18, 2017, the new commuter train known as Amtrak 501 was making its first trip on the new route with public passengers on board. Tear on the tracks on a day that was supposed to be a cause for celebration. Amtrak 501. Emergency, emergency, emergency. We are on the ground. An Amtrak train on the first day of a new high-speed service to Portland derailing, then careening off an overpass 40 miles south of Seattle. Is everybody okay? I'm still figuring that out. We got cars everywhere and down onto the highway. At 8 p.m. on December 18th, approximately 12 hours after the crash, Oxbow headquarters received a call from fellow SC and RA member Ness and Campbell Crane who already mobilized equipment to the site to begin the cleanup. The 270,000 pound locomotive pulling the train was in the middle of Interstate 5 and Oxbow was directed to immediately devise a plan to safely move the rail car from the site. At least three people died Monday when an Amtrak train carrying nearly 80 passengers derailed in Washington state. Train cars fell onto vehicles traveling on a highway below. John Blackstone has more details. The accident scene is a jumble of derailed train cars, trucks, and automobiles. An Amtrak commuter train on a new, higher speed line between Seattle and Portland derailed. One car flipped upside down onto the interstate, another dangling precariously off the overpass. Still others piled up, wreckage strewn over a wide area. Of the 14 cars, only one, the lead engine, remained on the tracks. Oxbow dispatched a team for the three-hour drive to assess the crash site. Once the initial site assessment was completed, the Oxbow team was escorted to the adjacent disaster headquarters. At 12.30 a.m., a roundtable planning meeting was held with a representative from Washington State Police, DuPont Fire Department, the National Transportation Safety Board, Washington Department of Transportation, military personnel from Joint Base lewis McCord, Siemens Engineering, Washington Department of Transportation Permit Department, and Washington Department of Transportation Bridge and Pavement Department. Determinations that were made at the meeting. The final destination would be a secure facility at the military base 10 miles away. Representatives from the National Transportation Safety Board would be overseeing all activities to ensure evidence for investigation was not lost. Washington Department of Transportation permit representatives and engineers would be available 24 hours a day to help expedite permit process. The locomotive was 14 feet 6 inches tall and needed to be moved in the same upright position as it came to rest after the crash to preserve any evidence for the investigation. Siemens engineers would be on site for the entire operation to consult on support method and lashing points for the move. The route survey was completed by 3 a.m., less than 20 hours from the time of the crash. From the crash site, the load must head north in southbound lanes of the interstate for four miles while crossing under two bridges with clearances under 16 feet. Take an exit off the interstate heading against the normal flow of traffic, turn two sharp 90 degree corners back to back while crossing a railroad track, travel another four miles on narrow two lane roads, cross under a pedestrian bridge with 15 foot six inch clearance at the military base, enter through a secure military gate with only 15 feet between steel ballards, navigate a roundabout on the base, travel the last two miles through tight gravel roads between active military barracks and park the locomotive in the secure area. Because of the low obstructions on the route, the only trailer that could facilitate the move was Oxbow's T-170 perimeter frame trailer. Later this afternoon, we've got to move, remove the locomotive from the scene. Just to give you an idea of that locomotive, it weighs over 270,000 pounds. Uh, it's extremely heavy. The trailer that we have to use to remove that is considered a low boy. The length of that, it takes two tractor trailers to move it, and with the trailer itself is over 270 feet in length, and it's probably gonna be wider than one lane, possibly into two lanes. It is gonna take quite uh, a feat to get that out of there. The T-170 was designed to haul loads up to 340,000 pounds with a bed length of up to 77 feet, but the longer the bed rails get, the rated capacity drops incrementally. 
Through FEA modeling, the Oxbow engineering team determined that the T-170 had the capacity to haul the load at the full length and maintain a 2 to 1 safety factor if additional cross braces were added to the bed rails and speed rails could not exceed 10 miles per hour on any grade change or turn. The engineer plans were provided by Oxbow Engineering to Washington Department of Transportation for permit approval by 10 a.m., 26 hours from the time of the crash. Washington Department of Transportation approved and issued the superload permits for the 585,000 pound GVW load within four hours. We are making some progress today, removing some train cars from the area. However, I do want to stress, this does not mean I-5 will reopen tonight. It still could be closed for several days. We're carefully working with the National Transportation Safety Board as well as emergency crews in the area to wrap up the investigation and to move these train cars. That being said, this is a very careful, delicate operation. We've got some weather in the area today, wind and rain. That can, that can complicate these big moves with these cranes that we're doing. In addition, these are very, very heavy and will take some time to make sure we remove you have a plan in place to remove them safely. Prior to loading the T-170, bed rails would need to be shimmed so they had 6 foot, 4 inch arch when empty. This arch would allow the trailer to be parallel with the ground when fully loaded with a 270,000 pound locomotive. The rail's loading level was critical to ensure the locomotive would ride as low as possible to maintain clearances under the three bridges Oxbow would pass under on the route. December 20th at 7 a.m., the locomotive is loaded and lashed onto the trailer. Then it is moved a quarter mile ahead to clear the crash site to organize traffic control and prepare for the final move. One of the largest pieces of the puzzle here, getting this giant locomotive from that Amtrak train out of the scene, and it is now, Joyce, moving away. It is the last piece that they needed to move off of I-5, but this does not mean that the highway is going to open. They're a long way from that. They still have some debris, they have a tree on the road, but this is significant progress in trying to get I-5 back open, and this is what Washdot has been waiting for. They needed special equipment yeah. that they had to bring in from Oregon to get this locomotive uh, moving. So this is really, really a good sign. 270,000 pounds of machinery, Washdot told us. It's an $8 million brand new engine. They needed two of those low boys, uh, as they call them, or the long loads you might see on the freeway to get this thing. But look at the size of this project, a feat of engineering, really. Looking at live pictures from Sky King overhead, you know, Washdot crews, they have been working around the clock since this happened uh, with the first responders and law enforcement officers who've been trying to just really do everything they can to get I-5 back open again. And that's what they're hoping to try to do. No guarantees it's going to reopen by late tonight because this NTSB investigation is ongoing. Load size, 270,000 pounds. Load height of 14 feet, 6 inches. Load length of 71 feet, 6 inches. Load width of 10 feet. Overall weight, 585,000 pounds. Overall length, 277 feet, 10 inches. Overall width, 16 feet. Overall height, 15 feet, 4 inches. Permitting and engineering, 117 man hours. Regulatory approvals, Washington Department of Transportation, Oregon Department of Transportation, National Transportation Safety Board, Siemens Engineering, Washington State Police, military clearances to enter active base. Physical elements, coordination with first responders in an active emergency accident scene, coordination with National Transportation Safety Board in an active investigation, multiple agencies and contractors collaborating on short time frame and small area, 24 hour round the clock work, heavy rains and winds, traffic control on major interstate highway. Safety considerations. Federal motor carriers driver hours of service considerations. Experienced drivers and riggers. Safety representative on site at all times to provide safety planning and pre-task meetings for each separate operation. Pre-planning time for sleep, proper nutrition, and hydration for crews performing round-the-clock work in high-stress atmosphere. Consideration in work planning to account for an active accident scene with human casualties and injuries. Coordination and planning with crane operators for critical lift and loading operation. Traffic control planning on major interstate highway and narrow city streets. Maintaining controlled work areas to limit public viewing and media access to the crash site and a long move route. Execution. 986 man hours. Custom designed Oxbow T170 dual lane trailer, 
custom designed and engineered bed extension system for extended length of the load, emergency response of all Oxbow crew members for round the clock work, no incidents, no accidents, no damage to cargo or equipment, no disturbance of evidence of an active NTSB investigation. My name is John Winans and I'm the region administrator for the Olympic region of the DOT which encompasses this area and uh, I get to come up and tell you today that we plan to reopen two lanes of I-5 southbound, the two left lanes, around five o'clock tonight. This is beyond uh, anything in my experience as far as the scale, the enormity of the event and how tragic it was for so many people. For this to all come together in essentially three days time and to reopen, the, to reopen this and get this done is it's uh, really a testament to the dedication of everybody involved.